Hey guys, Omni here. I just got back from a twofer at the theaters. I went and saw The Green Knight and Jungle Cruise, two very different movies for vastly different reasons. We're going to be talking about The Green Knight in this video. It's brought to us by A24, our favorite art house studio when it comes to film. It's directed and written by David Lowry and is based on the classic Arthurian tale, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. The film stars Dev Patel, Alicia Vikander, Joel Edgerton, Sarita Chalberry, Sean Harris, and Ralph Ineson. And it focuses around the nephew of King Arthur himself, Gawain, played by Dev Patel. As he is not yet a knight at this point that the story starts, it takes place Christmas Day, and these festivities at the castle are interrupted by an unusual guest. A gigantic axe-wielding green knight appears and challenges anybody who dare be able to lay a strike or land any blow upon his body. Gawain at this point in the story is still not yet a knight and has not had any adventures of his own to kind of match those of the great legends that fill this hall. So he takes the stand and he accepts the challenge of the green knight. Though there seems to be a little bit more to this challenge than meets the eye, but that doesn't stop Gawain as he manages to land a striking blow decapitating the green knight where he stands. And in that moment of victory, feeling pretty great about himself, uh, he is kind of caught off guard as the body is still standing and it reaches down, picks up its head, and the head speaks, telling him in a year's time from this day to meet him at the green chapel and he will return the blow that he was given. And he leaves. Having the aspiration to be a knight being honor bound to this agreement to accept this duel, to accept those terms, he must follow through. So we follow a challenge of his character, of his uh, integrity, of his honor, is what this entire journey is. You know, the Gawain in this story is much more flawed of a character. As this year slowly wanes by, you see it weigh on him, you see him cave, you see him struggle. Where in the original tale, he very much just kind of accepts it. The year passes and he goes off on his journey. He has a couple of trials here and there. And in the end, there's kind of this moral, this lesson that um, ends up kind of echoing throughout the remainder of the Arthurian legends, kind of a reminder that comes of this story to all of the knights of the round table at the end. This, however, is more of a deconstruction of what it means to live your life. What does it mean to sacrifice yourself to our cause? What does it mean to sacrifice your dignity. What does it mean? It challenges our hero through every step of the way. It doesn't escape uh, the grandeur or the magic of this era, of this lore, of this mythology. There are some very fantastical elements in here outside of a lot of the interpretive artistic imagery that happens in this. There's a lot of sequences that are definitely up to interpretation as for the viewer for what's happening. There's a lot of a lot of the storytelling in this is just as much visual as it is, you know, spoken by the people on the screen, spoken by the actors, the people involved or told to the audience. A lot of it is left there for you to piece apart. There's a lot of characters that go completely unnamed, but if you are familiar with Arthurian legend, you'll be like, oh, I know exactly who some of these people are, what they've done, what is happening here, but the movie doesn't really spoon feed you any of that. And I kind of appreciated it for that. It leaves a lot of this film to ponder upon. It does change some things. It twists some things and takes a different spin on the classic narrative as well and ends in a much different way than the actual tale ends, which definitely leaves it up in a, in a way to kind of interpret it for yourself what this story is about, what happened, and what the lesson we are going to take away from it is. My only issues I had with the film was that I felt like the pacing didn't flow very well. I felt like there was a, some times where it definitely dragged, some times where it felt like it lingered a little too long. That's the only kind of thing that I had as far as a gripe with the film. I thought it was beautiful. Everybody was fantastic as far as the acting in this. Um, Dev Patel it continues to just knock it out of the park in every role he's in. And I'll say it, at least as for as shite of a film that The Last Airbender was, at least he tried to do what he could with the material he had in that. He's a great actor. He gives a beautiful performance in here. Joel Edgerton as well is a standout performance in here. I think those two are two of the highlights of the film as far as the performances themselves go. Again, the cinematography in this is gorgeous. The imagery is gorgeous. There are some CGI elements in here that are... I wish could have looked a little bit better, but it never really took it out of, it just kind of added to the fantasy element of it. 
in a way that I don't think it really intended to. But it was a really, really interesting film. I'm very conflicted about it on so many emotional ways, but I think that's kind of the point of the movie. I went on an experience and that's what it is. That's kind of what I expect from A24 is I, I never really expect, I don't always expect to enjoy the film, but I expect to go through a journey and come out with a lot of questions and think about what I just watched. And that's kind of what I like about a lot of the films that come out of this studio is it does, they don't really spoon feed you a whole lot. There's a lot of stuff that they leave on the table for you as the viewer to kind of interpret and bring into it on your own. And that's one thing that I do really like about the film. I definitely was uncomfortable at quite a few bits. I was definitely pondering everything that was happening on the screen, taking in the imagery, the settings, the visuals, the performances, all of those were fantastic and I can't take away from those whatsoever. This definitely is going to be a film that I'm going to be able to recommend to everybody. It's definitely, if you are if you don't like artistically driven or slow character study kind of uh, deconstructions of classical myths, you probably won't be into this one. It's definitely not full of action, so it's more interpretive. I really have no idea how many people are going to be seeing this film this weekend, but if you have, I would love to know your thoughts. Leave those down below and we can carry on the conversation after the video. Huge shout out to our channel legends, Mandy Sher, Ryan Karen, Jason Coleman, and Philly Vane. Thank you guys, as always, for your support. If you want to follow me on all my socials or join the Discord, links to all those are in the description of this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody.